Hi chums. Um, I didn't think I was going to have anything to show today, but I do have some detail to show on, to show, and it'll let you see, give you some more idea of what the guy, these guys work, what way they work. Will you see this? So he arrived this morning, and there's one one man arrived, and did this here. He boxed this in temporarily, so that Rosemary doesn't get fried if she goes to put the light on. Okay, he did the same thing here. He has, he has boxed this temporarily, but he also has made a new fitting with cement, so when the new when the box goes on properly, it'll be sitting square. Um, another somebody else mentioned get those lights taken out of the ceiling. Well, he got the lights out. That was a bit difficult with cutting the plasterboard, but he got the lights out and pulled the wires so that no matter what light we put up next, um, the electrician has got somewhere to work at, so he's got access. But this is one thing that amazed me the most. See little silver things on the walls? Right? Those are pins and um, anchors, sorry. Plasterboard anchors are drywall anchors or sheetrock anchors. I'm getting to know a lot about this. And what they do is, these have been glued onto the wall with a special bonder, but those are just like a belt and braces. So if something did, if the bond did give, they, um, they, they won't come off the wall. They're, they're, they're put in on an expanding pin. And this thing here about the, along the bottom of the wall, it doesn't matter if these boards here touch the ground because the damp cannot get up the foil. The damp cannot get up this here, this foil backing. Neither can it climb up through the insulating foam. It just, that's, that's impermeable. So no water can get up it anyway. But they leave the space just to be sure to be sure. So that has kind of impressed me even more, you know. So those little anchors are buried in. You just, you just, you just bang them in until they're, they're, not, they're not flush. There's a wee bit of a hollow there just to make sure they're holding properly and they've got a real good grip. So that's what was done in here. The lights, the light switches, the light in the, the roof and all those little anchors were drilled in. And that took quite a fair bit of time. And then all these smaller boards, they were drilled in with more screws to hold those. So we know the roof's not going to come down and we know that um, all these, what do you call it, anchors are going to be holding in position. Then I'll show you what happened outside. Um, we were talking today and Seamus said to me about here. Do you see where the, the rules are on the windows? Well, that's where they're going to go around with all the, the, the coloured mortar. But then he realised that this part here was going to be lying with no rules except around the door. So there's no colour. So what he did was he cut out, he cut about three inches off each side there so that they can put two rules up the corner and it'll match them with the rest of the house and it'll look more like what it look exactly like what it was and it'll not leave that looking a bit bare. So that sort of attention to detail is what makes these guys so good, you know? And as you can see everything all tidied away and hidden hidden from view mostly so there's no mess. Excuse me, I just had my dinner there and I kinda of burped. This stuff here that's lying about I made a mistake the first day and started tidy, tidied some stuff up that was lying about but that's all lying there for a reason they're going to use all this stuff in this area again so they just leave it where they're going to need it, it saves time they're not going running looking for stuff so I, anything they leave lying I just leave it where it is because they're going to come back to it again um, this wall here at the back of the shed um, I was going to get it plastered and then I decided not to and then Seamus said, look, get a plaster, it'll look far better. So we're going to plaster this, and he can cover this old um, post here. He can, he's going to take this post and the rides coming down, because these were floodlights that I put up so that the boys could play football in the winter. The boys, well, I've only one son, but his mate Ryan lived here, basically, so I just call him the boy. He, he was like a son to me, you know? So I just talk about the boys. And the boys played football in the middle of the winter and they meant they had access to light and football any time they wanted. So those floodlights were up to light up the garden. They're not used anymore, they're not working anymore. And uh, what do you call it? There's my temporary, my temporary extension leading plug um, taped up with insulating tape and plastic bags. And it's been there 20 years and it's still working, you know. So as I say, the, um, 
they're going to take that one and they write down and leave this one but they can actually put a, a mesh on that and plaster over it and you'll never even know it's there but we do see this here this is really has has surprised me here do it's wrong my camera's loose my camera just came loose on the mount there i wonder if it was bouncing a little bit when i was walking right this here okay this was there was no roof there at all that was done today and um, we built a roof across the top now the roof isn't finished yet i can't get up oh i can get up to let you see hold on a wee second i'll just pull these pull these these um things over if i can get up here excuse me while i climb up that's me lifting myself up as you can see there he's got the frame up for a roof and then they'll put the laths across that and put put uh, put tiles on and then this is this board he asked me for a piece of 12 by 12 plywood and that's what i had in the garage and he just nailed the whole thing up and that's what he do and he said i don't want to cut it on you and he said, you were supposed to cut it but that's why it's, it's all up like that he didn't want to cut it but what they're going to do is they're going to put the tiles on from here down okay then they're going to put lead over the over that concrete ridge there they're going to put lead over that onto the back there and then they're going to plaster from they're going to plaster from the top down onto the lead and they're going to bring it out like a bell a bell casting again and they're going to run it down the bottom and run it towards their tiles so the water will run off that onto the tiles and down into the the, the gutters here okay and then this here is this here was all squared off this afternoon because it's a little toilet door and it wouldn't do if it didn't look nice you know so oh excuse me while I get down oh god this climbing thing's not good so as I say the little door is squared off and the roof was built but no tiles going on yet because um what was I going to say because they need to get in there to plaster and they don't want to be sliding off a roof but then you're going to say, oh, but he's just built a swimming pool. And I said, no, he hasn't, because he drilled um, holes right along here. So if any water does gather on that, it'll just run out the holes. So it's all been taken care of. But there's one more detail I want to show you, right? And it's here. You know, we've got the, the, we got the round walls built. As you can see, I'll show it from this side. Those are the round walls so we don't catch our jumpers and stuff on them. But what he did was he then squared those off and as you can see that's squared there and it's squared in that direction because the, the fascia board is going to come across there and stop and it's going to come up this way here and stop and he doesn't want a curve underneath that he wants it to be square so what he did was he brought the he brought the, the square down and then he made that little sort of little, little gothic effect there we brought it in on, down onto the curve again. And you did the same here. You can see there that he's got a square edge there. Now it's not square at the top, but he said he can't do that until he has the wall plastered. He couldn't go up that far because it was too much weight. But whenever that dries, he'll finish that wee bit off. And it means you get a nice clean edge there and there'll be no gap underneath the face of your board. And then once again, it comes down and it comes down onto that little little indent there that brings a curve down up brings the, the corner down onto a curve and i think that is really classy looking you know there's it there there's it straight on look at look at it so you can see you've got your you've got your whoops you've got your corner coming down well so you've got your corner coming down there and then you've got this bell it goes into a wee belly i'll show you this from this side here you'll get the profile better you know so you can see there you've got this coming down straight and then it comes down in onto the curve and becomes part of the curve and i think that is really tasty bit of work you know so that's the sort of detail that is going on here you know and is um spent the day here and that means that everything's set up for tuesday they're coming back on tuesday again they have another big job to do on monday and they want to leave this place to settle um, just to give everything a good chance to really dry out. Somebody asked me how long does it take to dry out? It depends on the weather and the wind and the sunshine and the rain and everything else. Um, normally you can be on to a job the next day again if it gets good drying, but they don't like things to dry too fast. They like, Seamus likes at this time of year because things are drying slightly slower, but they, get, they dry better. They don't dry, they get, they're not brittle when they come back to it again. 
And another thing I discovered was that you know all these coats that they're putting on the house. Remember I told you they had you have your the first coat. I'm gonna show you up here. Um, the first coat you've got your scudding, which gives a key for the scratch coat. And then there's another scratch coat goes on. And then you've got your render and then your dash. Well. Every coat is weaker than the coat before. So say that one there was made as five to one. The next one would be five and a half to one, uh, five, five buckets of sand and one bucket of cement. So five to one for the first, five and a half for the second, six to one for the third, six and a half to one for the fourth. Because if they put a heavier coat on top of a lighter coat, it would pull the light coat off the wall. So every coat goes on is slightly weaker than the one before. So like, there's, a, there's a load of there's a lots and lots to this that I had just have absolutely no idea about, and I'm getting a lot. I'm 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 having a lot of respect for plasters and what they do because all we ever see is the final coat, but we never see what goes on underneath it, and I'm seeing now, and it's it's phenomenal the amount of preparation that they they take. The plastering part is the fast part, it's the preparation that takes all the time. So there you go, that's where we are now. There'll be no more updates until Tuesday because um, they're taking three days, or well, the weekend, and then they're taking, going to another job on Monday. They need, I think, 10 or 11 plasters, I think, or something like that one, you know. So they're finishing out a big job then, and they'll come back here on Tuesday again. And we'll get started. So it gives us a wee rest as well, which is nice. The lathe, oh my goodness. Um, Mike Waltz, Alan Simpson, Robbie, Everybody's been at me. Um, there's a lady I don't know her name. She's from England. Um, she's got dark hair and glasses, and she's got a name that begins with M, but I can't pronounce those strange sort of number letters together. And they're all going, "Go with your heart," and then you don't smoke and you don't drink. And if you did that, you would, uh, your lathe would be paid for, wouldn't be paid for. You could, without doing that, you can pay for your lathe in a couple of months if you were to smoke and drink and everything. It's easy to spend somebody else's money for them. But I've been in touch with a company selling it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. It was returned supposedly with a fault, but there's no fault in it. They have tested it extensively. To them, it's as good as a new lathe. It's come with a warranty and there's still no bids on it. So I'm going to hold out and if, if it's still there, I'll go for it. I think I'll go for it. And I said, I was doing all this justification at tea time or dinner time there, lunch, evening meal time. And Rosemary's just looking at me laughing, going, there you go again, you know. It's, you have to tell people have to tell you what to do. But well, you know what the problem is? I feel guilty when I buy things. Um, I don't feel. This is sounds ridiculous, but I feel guilty because I don't think I deserve the things. And then if I get them, I, I don't feel that I should have got them, you know. Um, I don't know. It's maybe part of my upbringing or something, you know. My my, my guilt complex. But anyway, um, that's where we are with the building and. Well, no on Sunday about the lathe, so I'll we'll have, we'll have news on that on Monday. And for Alan Simpson, has given me a wee bit of a prod and said, how about a potato reveal this weekend, like the one with the skins? So I'm going to do the skin reveal tomorrow. And that means I have to do it now, Alan, doesn't it? Okay, all the best then, folks. Bye-bye.